By now, you've probably seen the videos where somebody takes an insulated bucket, they put a fan on it, they drill some holes in it, they put ice inside, or they take a cooler, they drill holes in it, they put a fan on it. There's multiple different scenarios, but what they're doing is cooling with ice. And is that possible? Absolutely, that's possible. John Gore was using that very same idea back in the early 1800s. He literally took ice and put a fan across it to be able to cool the buildings down so he could have cooling for his patients. He found he could treat yellow fever much more effectively when the patients were cooler. There's a long story behind that, but yes, cooling with ice is nothing new. What's new about it is people have rediscovered it yet again. Now, will it work cooling with ice? Yes, but we have to really understand what's going on. If we're camping in the desert, using evaporation is gonna be much more effective. You're talking about over a thousand BTUs for one pound of water evaporating. As long as the air is dry, that's a great cooling effect. However, if you're gonna go camping in Florida, evaporative cooling is not gonna do anything and you're talking about having to sleep in a very humid climate. So you could absolutely take ice and put it into one of those coolers or put it into one of those buckets and drill holes in it put it on a fan at the battery and have that air blowing across that ice, cooling you down. And what's gonna happen is as the warm air goes across this ice, the heat's gonna leave the air and go to the cooler ice. But as this ice melts, changes state from a solid to a liquid, it's absorbing 144 B2s of heat energy. And that's gonna continuously happen until all of the ice melts, and then you're still gonna have cooling all the way from 32 degrees liquid until whatever equilibrium temperature. So yes, it does cool. Now there's some catches to that. There's two ways we can do this. One is we can dump ice directly into that bucket or that ice chest, move the air across it. But the problem is, as that water is gonna be there, you're gonna end up with some evaporation and you're also gonna end up with more humidity. The other option is to leave it inside of a sealed container like this. If I took five of these in, that'd be five pounds. That'd be 720 BTUs I would need to melt five pounds of this. And what's cool about this is it keeps it in a sealed container. So here, as that changes state from liquid to vapor, I'm not having to re-evaporate that into the air and we keep the air from being even more humid than it already is. So yes, for camping, it works great. The catch is, will it work to cool your house? And that is an important concept. We have to think, where are we getting the ice from? And we have to get the ice from somewhere. So we have to go and either buy ice. So if we go and buy ice and we're buying a lot of ice and we're melting that ice, it's gonna get quite expensive pretty quickly. So the next thing people think about is, well, let me just go put this in the freezer. So they go take these bottles and they take and put them into their freezer. Sounds good, we're going to make our own ice. And yes, that will work. You can definitely take ice, but we have to understand thermodynamics. What's happening with that freezer is the heat is leaving the water and going to that cooler air around it. The heat from the air around it is going to the evaporator coil where the refrigerant's boiling at a lower temperature than that air. So the heat goes into that refrigerant, making the refrigerant change state from liquid to vapor. We then go to the compressor, we raise it from a low temperature, low pressure superheated vapor to a high temperature, high pressure superheated vapor. And then we put it through the condensing cooler. We desuperheat, make that refrigerant change state from a vapor to a liquid, and then we subcool that liquid back to the metering device, back to the evaporator so we can keep this happening. So we're actually taking heat out of the water and putting that heat into the air of the refrigerator, from the air of the refrigerator to the air outside of that refrigerator. So where is the refrigerator located? Well, most of the time it's located inside the house. So if you think about using your own refrigerator to try to cool your house, it's not gonna work because you're just making a big cycle. You're just spinning your wheels. We're literally taking the heat out of the water to make a solid, putting that into the refrigerator and from the refrigerator into the air of the same house that you're trying to cool. Overall, you're actually heating the house because of the energy use of the compressor itself and the energy loss of the compression and refrigeration cycle. You're literally heating your house up. So you have to move your refrigerator outside of your house. Well, if you move the refrigerator outside your house, it becomes less efficient because the outdoor temperature is much higher. So now your refrigerator is having to do a lot of work, but it, yes, it will take enough heat energy out of this water to make it change state back into a solid. How much of this am I gonna to have to do? Well, let's think about that. They actually size houses by tons of cooling. And what it really means is how many tons of ice would it take to change state from a solid to a liquid. Your typical air conditioner size is a three ton system. That means it has the capacity of the same amount of cooling effect to melt three tons of ice 
in a 24 hour period. So if you think about how big of an ice machine you're gonna need or how big of a freezer you're gonna need, you're gonna need a freezer big enough to be able to make three tons of ice in a 24 hour period. Once you make three tons of ice, you can bring that ice inside of your house and then you can cool your house. Now we're talking about a lot of work. You're having to move the ice back and forth constantly. You're having to have a very large freezer outside and it's not gonna be very easy and it's not gonna control the temperature well. So yes, cooling by ice is absolutely possible. It's actually refrigeration got its start with John Gorey before the air conditioner was even invented. And we actually sized air conditioners over tons of ice melting in a 24 hour period. We can actually divide that down. It comes to 12,000 BTUs in a one hour period. So it still comes back to melting ice. So I do like the creativity of all the different ways that people take ice, they put it into the ice chest, they put a fan across it. That's cool they're discovering it, but it's done before. Back in the 1800s, John Gorey, cooling with ice is actually where tons of cooling from air conditioner comes from. Yes, it works, but you have to understand the whole bigger picture. Is it overall gonna be able to effectively cool your house? No, we need an air conditioner. It actually controls the temperature, humidity, everything for us, and we don't have to worry about it. But for camping, yeah, if you can carry enough ice with you, sure, it can definitely make a difference while you're sleeping at night. All the same theory, hopefully that makes sense to you.